So in this video we're going to show you how to brew all grain beer on the grain farmer. As with any kind of brewing, there's always a dozen different ways you can do it. I'm not saying that they're wrong, this is just the way that we brew it. Um, and hopefully we'll give you some tips and some hints and some things to kind of look out for when you're using the grain farver and how to get the best out of the products. So the grain farver, it's an all-in-one brewing system, um, single pot. Great thing about it is it's small in space. Um, it allows you to get consistent, repeatable results by giving you timings and reminding you which steps you need to follow next as you're brewing, uh, which is a great help. Um, I've personally been using a grain father since roughly about the end of 2015, start 2016. Um, and we've been running a brew school at the Malt Miller now since 2017 using grain fathers as our brewing equipment. Okay, let's talk about some of the features of the grain father. Um, this is the grain father all in one with the Connect controller. The controller connects to your phone or your iPad. Um, this is where you kind of then send all the good recipe and it then does the reminders. Coming out of the bottom of the controller, you've got a temperature probe. Always make sure that's inserted into the body of the grain father. Um, the grain father will control the actions of the pump um, at the certain static stages of the process. And the pump will be drawing liquid from the bottom of the grain father, taking it back up through the top, either through the recirculation arm or through the chiller at the end when we're going to cool the work down. Um, clips on the side, don't use those um, when we're actually brewing beer. Okay, so this is the end of the pipe where the liquid is drawn into the pump. On the end of there goes the filter. The filter has a little black cap. Make sure that you push that onto the end. Little tip, always face that towards where the temperature probe comes through. That way, the temperature probe helps hold the cap on and then the pump's nice and secure on the end. The other thing to note, the element is in the bottom sealed inside just around this area and as you get through the process of brewing always try to avoid stirring anywhere near where the pump where the filter is that way you then stand less chance of knocking it off okay so this is the grain basket with the grain basket you get a bottom plate and a top plate both of these have silicon which goes around the edge can be tricky when you start to get the silicon to fit on there but you will eventually get the hang of gently edging the silicon on and fitting that onto the plates. Okay, little trip for putting this into the grain basket. So this is a solution of diluted star sand, just because that's what we've got to hand. So take the plate, don't put the plate in straight, put it at an angle so that way you've got minimum contact points on the side. Push that down. And at the end, just put your fingers on the last bit that you're straightening up. And the silicon should remain on the plate. Okay, to show you how best the grain father works, we're gonna actually brew a beer today. Um, the beer we're gonna brew is a beer called You Sexy Thing. It's a peanut butter chocolate milkshake stout. Um, it's available on the Malt Miller website. Um, influenced by some of those lovely kind of rich, roasty, kind of nutty flavors you get off some of the stouts out there. Um, with a peanut butter flavouring which you add in as you keg it. Um, there's some other additions in there such as molasses, um, lactose um, and obviously you've got hops in there. So best thing to do, make sure you've got all of your ingredients out and prepared ahead of starting the brew. Um, we've actually set the timer on our grain father on a delay timer so we set it yesterday so we came in, the, um, the water's up to temperature ready to start brewing um, so then all we've got to do is just add the grains to the grain basket and dough in. Um, when doughing in, the best thing is to take your time, um, slowly add the grain bit at a time, making sure that you're getting the paddle in there, giving it a good stir. Um, you want to get all of those grains wet. Um, you want to make sure you've got no clumps, nothing kind of sticking together in big dough balls. Um, so just really take your time and also try to avoid hitting the centre pipe um, because if you imagine that centre pipe is attached to the base plate so every time you hit it you're then moving the base plate um, and then that actually can allow some of the grain to escape out of the basket and into the main section of the grain farmer. Okay so once you've finished doughing in next thing is to add the top plate. So like the bottom plate this has got a silicon ring around it, fit that um, and again 
place it in at an angle so you've got minimum contact points and this will help you to keep the silicon on the top plate. Um, once the top plate's in, push that down to meet the grain bed. Then put the overflow on top so that that meets the top plate. And then what you're doing is you're almost sealing the grain into the basket, almost like a giant tea bag. Um, and this just means that later on when we're going to lift the grain out, you're taking the grain away and leaving all the liquor in the, in the grain farm. So now put the glass lid on, fit the recirculation arm. Um, which just attaches to the side of the grain farmer. Ensure that the outlet is open, and then start the mash either on the control unit or on the app on the phone. Okay, so it's finished mashing, so we're now going to move the arm. Just going to close off the valve there. Move the lid. This is hot. So be careful with that. Take the handle, find the holes on the inside of the basket. Okay, so you've got in this recipe roughly about six kilos of grain and 20 litres of water there, so that's quite heavy to lift up, so always be careful how you're doing that because also it's very hot. A little tip on the sparge water here, I'm going to put 12 litres of sparge water into my beer, so on this it starts at 16 and a half, let's just have a 16 and a half litres in there. We've put a little cable tie on there to kind of mark where we're going to be finishing, again just another tip to kind of help you remember when to start adding water so you don't over dilute your beer. So it's sparging. There's lots of different ways you can do it. Some people are just dump it all in there. Um, I like to go for a slower approach. You know, I like, don't like anything really more than an inch above the grain bed. Um, you can also, if you want, remove this piece and put this piece back in. just so that then you're not just forcing water down the centre. So, I'm just going to slowly add in sparge water. The idea is you've got to wash the whole of the grain bed. You want to wash out as much sugar as possible because all of that sugar has the potential to be alcohol. So try and get as much sugar out of this as you possibly can. Okay, so the sparge is finished. Um, I've put the amount of sparge water I needed into there. Um, We've not added the last amount on the control unit because the minute you tell the control unit that you've added all the sparge water, it will then aim for 100 degrees. And I like to let as much of it drip through as, um, as, as possible. So I'm now going to take the basket off. Put that into there. And I'm going to tell the grandfather that we've finished sparging and it's now going to aim. 100 degrees. Okay, so the grain farmer's just told us that 100 degrees has been reached, so start the boil, start the timer. So we've pressed set and that's now moved that onto the next part. Um, what you need to watch out for at this stage is watching it out for um, a boil over. Basically, it's, it's a big pan of hot sugary liquid, so it's like a pan of milk. It can easily just go. Um, so, your best tricks are to kind of avoid a boil over. Just stand there and stir it until you get these rolling bubbles. Um, and another tip is if it does look like it's going to boil over and the foam is going to come all the way over, um, spraying it with um, a solution of cold water or uh, diluted star sand will be fine. That will help to calm it down. Okay, so the grain is telling us now it's time to add our first hop addition. So, I'm going to pop the hop spider in. I always put the hop spider over where the filter is, so again that reminds me not to go stir in near there. So press the set button and just add the hops into the hop spider. Okay, so in here we've got our lactose and our molasses. Um, the easy way to add this is not to just tip it straight into the grain father, but to actually pump out some of the boiling hot, and I'll just repeat that's boiling hot work, so you don't really want to get it on your hands, but if you pump some of it out, so you're then dissolving the sugar into the hot liquid and you can stir it around 
because if you just dump this straight into the grain father it's pretty much going to sink to the bottom and then it'll start to burn and stick to the bottom. Okay, so we're just going to add the wort and sugar back into the grain father. Okay, so it's now telling us to add our 15 minute hop addition, which is, in this case, 60 grams of Styrian Golden. So those just go into the hop spider. So in here, I've got uh, cocoa nibs. These have been roasted and then crushed with a pestle and mortar just to kind of make them a little bit smaller. So again, I'm now gonna add this addition in. Okay, so now we're on our last 10 minutes. Um, so it's asking for our 10 minute additions, which in this recipe is Irish moss, usually about a teaspoon. I've got a tablespoon here, so I'm not gonna use all of it. Just that goes into there. This just helps with um, clearing the beer. And yeast nutrient, depending on which one you've got, they've all got different measurements. Um, this is the NBS yeast nutrient. Uh, this just needs a small amount. Okay, we're now kind of getting towards the last few minutes of the, of the boil. So we're going to connect up the chiller. The chiller is um, included with the grain father. Here we've got them all mounted on the wall because that just works best for us for our brew school that we have. Um, at home, you would generally have the glass lid on with the chiller on there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to connect it up to the grain father. Pop that into there. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the pump on and let it pump through the chiller back into itself. This is then sanitising the chiller because we're now going to start getting to the point where we're going to cool this down and as you get to the cool side, that's when you need to protect against um, infection. Okay, so we've got our sanitised fermenter. I'm just going to take that off. Take this out of here, which we've been recirculating the wort through. pump that into the fermenter. Whilst at the same time, turning on the cold water. Okay, so the wort is now cooled in the fermenter. Um, you want to aerate the wort before you pitch your yeast. You can do it the industrial way using the grain father aeration paddle. Um, or you can use a plastic paddle and just whisk it up and froth it around in there. So, um, <laughs> okay, so we've taken our sample out the fermenter. And we'll take a reading of that and record that. Looks about 1092. Okay. Um, now we're going to add the yeast. Now, we've already aerated the worts as we showed you. I'm just going to spray the yeast packet with Star Sun. Reason being, um, sometimes you can be a bit clumsy and maybe drop the packet in there. If you've sanitised it, less chance of infection. Take the lid off. So we're using Pub A09 from Imperial. Um, Imperial yeasts are really good. We've used these quite a few times on a lot of our brews. And this is the yeast that you get included when you buy the kit from us. So that just goes into there. Squeeze it out. Lid, which was already sanitized, but just because I've been in contact with my hands, I'm just going to give it another spray and then we're going to add in the bung, airlock, sanitizer on the top. and lock the lid on. Okay, that's the end of the brew day. The wort's in the fermenter, the yeast has been added. Um, seven to 10 days, that should be pretty much ready to then start thinking about bottling or um, 
and kegging it. Um, now all we've got to do is clean down the grain farther. It's quite a simple process with it being stainless steel. Um, they have a cleaner uh, which you kind of run through it and that cleans all through the pump and the chiller. Um, the process will probably take you about 20-25 minutes. Um, hope you really enjoyed the video and found it useful. Um, if you did, please like our channel, um, visit us on Facebook and also visit our website where you'll be able to find more videos, um, recipe kits um, for beers just like this.